Stone Coast and all that are tuning in, you know, like one of the things that I want to just go to go to prayer. But before I do, I want to like thank Amanda and, and you know, really the team putting that all together. But for Amanda to that song, Peace Be Still, it, there's a couple of things that really stood out to me, this idea that to not have fear, you know, like to peace be still. Sometimes that's up to us to be in that place where we need to be still in order for the peace to come. And when the peace comes, it casts out that fear. So depending on where you're at this morning, my prayer is that you would just be able to be still in God's holy presence. And then it just says like this idea of peace over you. So I, I pray for, for God's peace to, to come over you and into your being, into your soul, into your mind to settle God's presence and his spirit to come settling and hovering over you in such a way that you would realize his peace. And this peace is the peace that passes all understanding. This peace is a peace that can come and, and carve its way through the darkest moments, through the longest nights. And God's peace can reign in the midst of chaos and confusion. And Lord, we ask for your peace to come over us as, as children of God. And Lord, another part of the song that I mean, it says, like, faith rise up. And so, Lord, we ask that you would just allow us to allow our faith to, to rise above the circumstances, to rise above my feelings, to rise above the, whatever I'm going through. Lord, that we can replace the fear with our faith and we can realize your peace. So come and minister, Lord. Make a difference in our lives. We're thankful for this opportunity to come before you and for all the God of all creation to come and be with us. So, Lord, we receive you. We receive your peace, the gift of in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we're going to be talking about peace this morning, but before I do, I got a couple of quick announcements. And um, sometimes I don't like to, to move too quickly because it's, it's important that we recognize that e each piece of us gathering together, right? Like where, wherever you are right now, it's like if you can just take that deep breath um, I don't care if you're driving, if you're gardening, if you're walking, if you're sitting in your, in your living room, like wherever you are, just take a moment to take a deep breath and, and receive the gift of his peace. Um, it is a gift, and it's something that I find to be like um, in my faith, in my journey, that this is something that throughout, the, throughout life, you know, you're going to go through the roller coasters, and you, you're going to get hit. And it's, it's in those times, in those storms, where it's like if we can understand God's peace and understand how to connect with Him and how to draw close to Him and allow Him to draw close to us can get us through whatever we're going through. And so, again, I'm just very grateful for, for Amanda putting together these songs that just, just really speak to our hearts and can do something to bring forth life into all of us. And we're, as a church, we're, we're doing... Uh, this really cool thing for graduates. So if you're graduating high school or college, you know, in, in 2020, uh, as a team, we wanted to uh, just take some time to allow you to come to our Four Echoes Vintage Shop here in Seekonk. And we have this beautiful gazebo down by the, the pond, the gristmill pond. And so we have a professional photographer. His name is Brian, who's willing to come out there on, what's the date? June 6th? On Saturday, June 6th, between... What times? Three and, five. Three and five. And so if you want, you can sign up. There's a link there that you can do that right online. And you can sign up for a slot. You know, I think we're asking you to sign up for a couple of different slots. And then we'll get in touch with you. And, um, you know, we'll coordinate that with you so that you have a specific time slot. And it's just our way of saying, you know, like we really want to celebrate. you. We know that, uh, you know, with COVID-19, this is just like, you know, really throwing a wrench into your, into your senior year. And, you know, my daughter Jen is experiencing this. And so we've, as a family, come around that. And, um, you know, but it's tough. Like, there's not much we can say about it. It's just the reality that she's in. And, and there's many of you that are in that situation. So 
hopefully this is a, you know, a small gesture to, to let you know that we're thinking of you, we're celebrating you, we're congratulating you. Uh, so come on out, sign up, and we'd love to take a, you know, a portrait. The, the first picture is free. And uh, if that's all you want to do, that's perfectly fine. But if you did want to uh, have more than one picture, then you're willing to work out a package deal with Brian, the photographer. Uh, but we're just, we're just grateful to you, grateful to be able to do this for you. Um, so that's one thing. And then um, each week, you know, we, we want to connect with you. And so especially if this is your first time or if you've never filled out a Connect card, really, like we do this electronic Connect card so you can see that link up there in Facebook Live. And uh, the, the reason why we want to do this is, first of all, we, we want to build a relationship, right? We want you to get to know us a little bit. We want to be able to answer any questions that you have. We want to be able to share our vision, our mission. I mean, we're really excited about why we do what we do and why we exist. And we want to be able to share that with you. Um, we, we do a lot of great things in our church and in our community. Um, and so we'd love for you to be a part of that. And so the, the first little step there is for you just to take a, literally two minutes of your time to click on that link, fill it out, and then um, you know, some, myself or someone on our team will connect with you and, uh, and start that journey. You know? So we welcome you. Glad that you're here. And I do want to say this. Like, we're a church where it's like one of our themes is come as you are. And uh, this is for anyone, regardless of where you're at in the spiritual spectrum. You know what I mean? I don't care if you're an atheist, you're a Buddhist, you know, wherever you're at in that. Um, you're welcomed here because I believe that a Christian worldview is, is open to all folks and, and all of us can lean into it and t- can receive life from it. It's life-giving. And so wrestle with it, right? Where, this is why I, I, I welcome everyone to be a part of this is because I love the dialogue. I love the different people's perspectives and depending on how you are raised and what culture you come from. Uh, and and let's, let's enter into that, that dialogue together. And so we welcome that. Um, so thank you for being with us. And then also just want to give you the opportunity to give and support our ministry. Again, we have like a lot of amazing things happening that we're excited about. Um, we're, we're actually in our Four Echoes Vintage Shop. And as a team, we just um, decided that we're going to actually be opening up um, an ice cream shop. And so we're going we're gonna to need you know, uh, some monies to be able to do that. And um, so that's just one thing that we do. It's a nonprofit, so we're able to give back into the community for helping with homelessness and kids coming out of foster care and uh, kids with disabilities and also the inner city youth. So these are just some of the things that you're giving contributes to, making a difference in people's lives. And so we're grateful. You know, we have just a, a very generous church, and we want to give everyone opportunity to give um, and, and contribute to this, this mission that we have. And so there you go. So um, I am going to be talking about uh, what happened with George Floyd uh, as part of this time in prayer because I believe that we need prayer as a nation, and I'm going to get that. So I just want to make sure you, you know that. Uh, one of the things that I want us to, as a church is to be relevant and to be able to tackle t- tough issues and topics. And um, it breaks my heart, you know, like um, in, in many ways we have a long way to go as, as a nation, right, and as a people. And it's sad, it should sadden all of our hearts um, to really mourn for us as a nation and, and, you know, what causes us to still have this division. And so we have work to be done. And, and this idea of, of peace that's why I'm like, kind of like in that moment right now is because in the scriptures, in, in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, he talked about being peacemakers, right? Like that we bring forth peace, you know? And it's like, we've got to stand up against the strife and, and the anger and all the different things that cause us to treat people less than. Um, and, and many times just because of someone's color of their skin, and that's just appalling. Um, we're all children of God, right? And we've been created in his image. And uh, we got to learn how to love people and bring peace into this world. And this just is another uh, indicator of why the kingdom of God is so important to bring peace on earth, to, to bring love and dignity and respect. So we have our job cut out for us. And as Christ followers, we're committed to following Christ in his ways. And so we've been in this series called In Between. And we've talked about things that just really matter during this time. You know, we've talked about marriage and relationships and parenting and loneliness and finances. And last week we talked about grieving and mourning with those who mourn. And I'm very grateful for my friend Steve that joined us last week. It was just a fantastic experience. Um, so valuable, you know. It added so much to us as, as a people. 
And so if you weren't able to tune into that or any of this part of the series, you can go on our website or on our Facebook page and, and check that out. Um, but this is meant to be an interactive experience. So if you have questions, comments, thoughts, like even right now, knowing I'm, I'm going to be talking about prayer, if you want to, what is uh, something that you struggle with or have struggled with regarding prayer? Um, what are things that you, um, you know, like you wrestle with and you wonder about? And it's like, you know, we all have experienced that. Like, why God? Why is this happening? Why isn't this prayer being answered? Why is my child suffering? Why is this happening? You know, like just all of those questions. And so I want to know where you're at. You know what I mean? Like, so take time. You know, in your vulnerability, when you share online, I know it takes something and, and this isn't for everyone and I get that. But when you contribute in that way, it contributes to all of us, right? To our extended community, to anyone that's going to be watching this. Like when you... When you offer, that's a gift to all of us. And I'll stop and I'll make comments as I can to make this a more interactive and experiential time. And so um, I have told you each week I would say this phrase, we're all in the same ocean, but we're in different boats, right? Like, so this, this pandemic is the, the big ocean that we're all in globally and experiencing together. And yet each of us are in our own little boat, you know what I mean? And, and we're experiencing very differently. And so even with this topic of prayer, for some of us, we have this vibrant prayer life. And I mean, it seems like when we pray, you know, mountains move. And uh, and other of us go like, I just have so many questions about it. I don't even know if I should go to God about these small things, you know, like I don't want to bother him. Or, you know, you think God is just off in the distance somewhere and you don't know what you can bring to him. And, And maybe you haven't even experienced his power in your life and you feel like, why bother, right? Like there's a huge spectrum to prayer. And it's one of those things that, that Jesus taught his disciples right through the Lord's Prayer. Uh, he taught them that. So I would encourage you to look in the Gospels and, and look at that prayer. You know, most of us can recite it, and I would encourage, instead of reciting it, actually write it down and, and just take it line by line by line and, and reflect on it and what it really means and, and, and take time to be with God in each line of that prayer because it is Jesus' way of teaching us how to pray. Um, the other thing is that Jesus' last prayer was a prayer of unity and oneness. Like, like God's desire is for us to, to be one with him, for Jesus and the Father to be one, and for us to be one with them. And so there's something beautiful about, about prayer that, that joins us together. It unites us. It's, it's something we all can do. And we serve a God who, who loves that and enjoys that, communing with his people. And so um, today we're going to be taking a look at David. And for some of you, like David, you, you may know David as um, the David and Goliath, right? You, a lot of us have heard the story of, of David and Goliath. And, and David is just this shepherd boy who, who to me, is like there's a sense of innocence there. There's a sense of almost naivete, but we call it faith. Right. It's like his belief in God, like he didn't know any better. It was like everyone else saw the Goliath size and and the Philistines in this massive army and like they're going to destroy us. And David just said, wait, whoa, whoa, I I serve God, like the one who's all powerful. And that's who I go with. I don't go by myself and God will strike down the Goliath. And some of us know David from that story and just love that the underdog of David and it does something for our souls. Right? But some of us know, know David as, as the King David or, or the warrior king. Like this guy that was just vicious and tenacious and, and was unbelievable in battle. And that, like, there's something about that, like that you contrast that with because some of us know him as the warrior and other of us connect to him as poet and writer and like songwriter and psalmist. And like this other side of him as a creative, as an artist. And it's just like this dynamic that's going on. And, and then like some of us know David as David and Bathsheba. We've heard that story. And it's like, well, how can that be? You know what I mean? Like how can this guy who, who's called a man after God's own heart, right? Some of us know him as that. But then like, but what did he do with Bathsheba when he had an adulterous affair with her and had her husband killed in battle? And so to me, it's like there's so much to learn from this man, David, because he's, he's complicated, just like all of us, right? Like we all have stories, we all have experiences, 
and 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 none of us have arrived and none of us are perfect and yet there's this thing about us it's like that we can we can relate to david because we can relate to like oh my gosh i aspire to be that warrior i aspire to be that creative i i aspire to be a man or woman after god's own heart and yet i know i fall and man when i fall it's it's hurtful and it takes me down and i'm in a pit and i take others down with me and david experienced that pain and he experienced that loss and he experienced that guilt and that shame and i believe that we can connect with him on that level and so i've chosen uh to read out of psalm 40 so i got chuck who's a good friend of mine he's also on our leadership team here so he's just going to do a bible reading with us it's kind of lengthy so i just encourage you to um just to wherever you are just to kind of hear god's word and then we'll pick up on the back side of that come on up chuck well good morning uh this morning we're going to be reading from psalm 40 um so i think we want to go into the reading of god's word i waited patiently for the lord he turned to me and heard me cry he lifted me out of the slimy pit out of the mud and the mire He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you planned for us. None can compare with you. Were I to speak and tell of your deeds, they would be too many to declare. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have opened. Burnt offerings and sin. Is my mic not on? Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. Then I said, Here am I, I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is within my heart. I proclaim your saving acts in the great assembly. I do not seal my lips, Lord, as you know. I do not hide your righteousness in my heart. I speak of your faithfulness and your saving help. I do not conceal your love and faithfulness from our great assembly. Do not withhold your mercy from me. Lord, may you love the faithfulness always protect me. May your love and faithfulness always protect me. For troubles without number surround me. My sins have overtaken me, and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails within me. Be pleased to save me, Lord. Come quickly, Lord, to help me. May all who want to take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. May those who say to me, aha, aha, be appalled at their own shame. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for your saving help always say, the Lord is great. But as for me, I am poor and needy. May the Lord think of me. You are my help and my deliverer. You are my God. Do not delay. May God add his blessing to this reading, hearing and doing of his word. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, so we're going to... If, if you missed a little bit of that, that's okay. I'm going to be going through that. Um, that's, that will be the, uh, the source of our teaching. So if you have a Bible, you want to open it up to Psalm 40, please do that. If you have your phone in front of you, a great Bible app is called YouVersion, Y-O-U, and then the word version. So Version is a great Bible app. I'm going to bring Chuck up later in this teaching. He's here to kind of share his story um, and his journey with prayer. So he'll be teaming up with me a little bit here. Um, but maybe what I want to say to you first is that prayer is, is one of the most beautiful and powerful creations in all the world. And I just want you to soak that in for a moment. The God of the universe, to make prayer central with his creation, speaks volume about who the creator is. Think about that for a moment. Like there's, there's, We take for granted the design that God has. He designed it in such a way that his creation could commune with him. 
that there was a way for us to be with God, to talk with God, to hear from God, right? That, that's, that's, that should just stop us in our tracks. And, and I think sometimes we, we take that for granted. And it's a, it's a privilege and it's an honor. Like he makes a way for us to be with him. And then think about this, the God of the father of, of, of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. He wants to be with you. He wants us to draw near to him. You know, and it promises us that if we draw near to him, that he'll draw near to us. And so just think about the God of all creation, the God of the universe, the, the, the one who can speak a word and bring forth life and existence and breath. He wants to be with you. He wants to spend time with you. And he wants you to get to know him and to trust him. And this is a beautiful start of a relationship. Like if you can look at prayer, it's the number one ingredient to getting to know the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in that, right, the triune God is is a God who's in community. He values relationships. And so he's made a way through prayer to connect with us and for us to connect with him. And in John 15, it just talks about this beautiful imagery about the branches and the vine and just being connected, right? And that there's so much power there when we're connected. All things are possible. And this is, again, it's just the imagery of like saying, I want to be with you. I want you to be one with me. I want to be connected, right? So just think about that, that you're never alone, that you're never powerless. Like God is always there. He's willing and able. And so I'd like just to take a moment. I wrote out a prayer that I'd like to pray with us together. So if you could, wherever you are, if you don't mind, pray with me. Lord, and just let that sink in, that he's Lord. And what does that mean in my life? God, Yahweh, Jehovah, come and be with us. Lord, have your way in us. Have your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May we reverently and humbly come before you to worship and praise your holy name. May we come patiently and expectantly to the throne of grace. We thank you for this day this moment, for the gift of breath, for the gift of life. Yahweh, speak to us and allow us to have ears to hear. Give us eyes to see you with and receive our praise. We love you and we adore you. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So to me, like this... uh, Maybe a more reverent prayer. But I just felt like in this moment, there's a place for that. And now I want to read you a prayer that I wrote myself. And you'll hear maybe the earthiness of it and, and, and how granular it is. Because like, I want you to know like, there's no <laughs> quote-unquote right or wrong way to pray. It's about being with God. And so whether it's in silence, whether it's you sharing, whether it's you listening and receiving, uh, whether it's you yelling and crying and screaming in anguish, like whatever it is, whatever's inside of you, just bring it forth and be with God and let him be with you. But this is a prayer that I wrote and you'll see how in my life where I struggle with different things, I kind of like I'm calling on God to ask for his help. So I wrote, Jesus Cause me to be others focused. Cause me to care deeply about what matters to you. There's a reason why I'm saying this because it doesn't come naturally to me and I want him to actually cause me, to to move me, to, to remind me. Cause me to be curious and interested in others because I tend to put myself first. And I put in causing transformation. Help me to lay down my life so others see Christ in me. Cause me to lead at all times. 
caused me to lay down looking good and pick up being vulnerable. Lay down fear of failure and pick up trusting you as I take risks to love others. Help me to take full responsibility and to lay down blaming other people. Cause me to live life by being others focused and lay down my life and making it all about me and what I want. Have your way in me, Jesus, and help me become more like you in all areas of my life. Help me to take action and be a person of integrity. In Jesus' name, amen. So I know that everyone resonates with different things. And so this is a prayer that I actually have on my phone. And so I have a list of prayers that I kind of go to and pray on a regular basis. And then there's other times just like very, whatever, whatever prayers come, come forth, come forth. And so I want to kind of like, for some of you need permission. It's kind of funny to, to, to have conversation with people about prayer. And so it's like, yes, it's okay to write your own prayers. <laughs> it's okay to steal prayers, right? There's so many saints that have gone before us that, that have written amazing prayers, right? There's prayer books that are written. Um, there's prayers throughout scripture, right? So it's like, Take these prayers and make them a part of your life in whatever shape, way, or form that looks like. But it's, it's about being with God, to talk and to listen to Him, right? And so the more we do this, um, it, we need to be, um, not, not we need to be, I don't want to say it that way, but there's something about being real and authentic and being vulnerable, um, I, I, I don't know what's going on in the screen because I can't really see it that great, but uh, there's, I would like for you, if you haven't already, just to be, again, any questions that you have about prayer, any, uh, any life things that you've gone through that you've wrestled with that have caused long nights, if you don't mind writing that in there, I want to be able to speak to that. I want to be able to encourage. I want to be able to pray. And so I thought that this would be a, a good time when we're just in the heart of this just to pray for our nation. And, you know, when we have a uh, thing that happens with the man, George Floyd, who, who lost his life and, um, and his life was taken from him, it, it should stir something inside of us, right? Like we talk, there's a reason why we call this store four echoes. And the four echoes of a voice are spirituality, relationships, beauty, and justice. And this falls into the category of justice and relationships, it's like what happened is wrong. What happens in our nation on a regular basis is wrong. And we need to do something about it. And I've been, I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook other than the things that I put out there. Um, but I know that there's a lot of things being said out there. And there's a few things that I saw that I actually appreciated quite a bit where it was like reminders of our humanity, like reminding us that we're, we're better than this that we need to understand white privilege. We, under, we need to lean into why there's still racism and prejudice in our world, in our nation, inside of us. And I don't claim to understand that, meaning I know that there's, I'm, I'm in a culture where white privilege is, is there, so I know I've succumbed to that, and I want to I wanna be more aware of that. I'm actually thinking about uh, in, a, in the next series to kind of come around this issue and bring on different guests who can speak to this and speak from their own experience and speak from uh, different perspectives because I feel like this is, this is how God works. He works through a community of people that are diverse. If you look at scripture and you look at what it means to be in creation to new creation, it, it gives this beautiful picture of all the nations coming together. Right, with all its diversity, with all its differentness, and that we come and we worship God together. Like there's again that sense of unity, the sense of oneness. And it's it's this thing that's like, I hope this thing that the the four echoes, the justice, right? The voice of justice, when we watch this on the news and we hear of this grievous act, this heinous, violent crime, like that should not happen. And it stirs up because there's something broken in us as human beings. We need prayer. We need peace. And we need love. And so let me pray for us. God, we come before you 
as a, as a broken nation, a nation in order that needs to repent, a nation that needs to be more aware. And I'm included in that. We're all included in that. Where we need to humble ourselves and ask the difficult questions. You know, why does this stuff still happen? Why does it matter a person's color of their skin? Like, I just don't get that. God, help us to move beyond that. Help us to love brothers and sisters from all walks of life with all different colors of skin. And let us just see people the way that you see them. Help us treat each other the way we want to be treated. Help us to be a people that will treat others with dignity and respect. Lord, bring healing to our nation. Redeem us, Lord God. The things that are broken in us, the things that cause us to bring forth evil, to take people's lives. Like all people matter, God. And may we all see people the way you see them. So God, I ask that you would come and be with us as a nation right now. Because there's so many people that are on the streets right now and they're protesting and, and just there's so much anger and so much, you know, just this stuff is just piling up because it continues to happen over and over and over again. Lord, we need to be the kind of people that can resolve this and resolve it in the right way, but it needs to be resolved. And so God, we ask for your power and your spirit to go forth. And may you bring unity into the United States of America. Lord, we're supposed to be the great boiling pot. We're supposed to be the country that people would love to come to. Lord, because it's a Christian Judeo society, so Lord, let us get back to our roots, to the biblical foundation to love our neighbor as ourselves. So Lord, your power go forth. In your name be glorified and your will be done. And may we protest in peace and may we protest in ways that are effective in ways that will bring about change and healing and restoration and so lord may you lead the way in this and we love you lord and i ask that you be with the family be with the friends so many of us have lost people to these shameless acts so minister peace and comfort and love and compassion. And may they realize your loving embrace and your presence as they mourn their loss. In Jesus' name, amen. Couldn't be any quieter here on the set. I'm just going to say that. Let's break the ice here. Anything out in Facebook land? What's going on out there? We got nothing. Come on, folks. This is a, a, a powerful teaching. We need to hear where you're at. So let me dig into this scripture that Chuck read in uh, Psalm 40, verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. And so like one of the things that I really appreciate about David is is like I said earlier, like our relatability, like that, that he's a real man who, who went through all of these things. And if you, you can't step past this psalm and in, in taking into consideration where he's at, like this idea that, that he's been crying, that, you know, he's stuck in this mud and this mire and he can't get out. He's like in this slimy pit. You got to ask yourself, like, have you ever felt that way? And maybe that's where you're at right now. And we got to say, like, what did he do? What did, how did David handle this? And the very first thing he did is, like, I waited patiently for the Lord. So sometimes, you know, by starting with this phrase, this is the phrase that the psalmist, David, wanted us to get. There's an there's a emphasis on this idea of waiting because it's that important. So as David is writing to fellow sojourners on the path of suffering, Waiting does a couple of things for us, right? So 
first, it identifies not only with David and his humanity, but it also helps us to identify with Jesus. If you have a Christian worldview, there ought to be like an appreciation for the endurance and the suffering of Jesus himself as he was beaten and spit on and, and embarrassed and shamed and crucified and whipped, right? Like all these things that he went through, but he did it waitingly. And he also did it expectantly, knowing that the Father, that his will would be done, that victory would come, but that he had to face this head on. And so there's something about endurance and and wading through the sufferings with expectation. And so waiting also is this other idea of be patient in affliction. So if you can remain patient when life is coming at you, there's something that you'll discover about yourself and about God. Something about his mercy, something about his grace, something about his goodness, something about your resolve, something about your faith, something about your ability to trust in him and not what you see and what you're experiencing. So be patient in affliction and also be expectant of God's help and intervention. See, it's not just enough to pray. Like, we, we have to have experienced something of God's power to trust and to believe that help is on the way. That somehow, he's going to intervene. And I don't know what that will look like in your situation, but there's something about the Christian faith that says that I believe that God is going to show up, that God is going to sustain me, he's going to empower me, he's going to allow me to get through this time. And maybe if I'm patient in affliction, maybe I'll actually come out refined. Maybe my character will be stronger. Maybe I'll understand the depth of suffering and my connection to God that will have a weight to it that otherwise I wouldn't have. And there's a gravitas to that, that there's something about that that happens in my soul and my spirit that then I can be of help to someone else and comfort them in their loss and in their pain and in their suffering. So my key point here is prayer is waiting patiently and expectantly for the Lord. So I have an example. So one of the things, and then Chuck, I'll see if you want to, you know, if there's anything you want to share. But my example of, of, of waiting, I, I was thinking about like a waiting room, right? Like I'm just thinking like there's things that happen in waiting rooms and they're not usually good, right? Like if you're in a waiting room, uh, sometimes it's, for really bad reasons, right? But other times, so I was talking about the birth of my child. Like there's supposed to be in that waiting room, like there's a gift of life about to come. And so there's, there's an expectant joy perhaps. There's an expectance of, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be a dad, you know? But when, when Diane was pregnant with Jenna, our first child, um, so now you got all the unknowns, like this whole thing about being pregnant and like what happens, like I don't care what kind of classes you go to, they don't, they don't equip you. <laughs> um, and so uh, Jenna was, I think like at three in the morning, I was talking to Diane today about this, trying to get some of my facts straight because I don't remember these things. So at about three in the morning, Diane's water broke. So we, we went to the hospital and she was in labor for 16 hours. And I was just like, that's a long day, fellas. You know, I was like, I thought it was a long day. So <laughs> Diane's smiling at me. I can't even imagine, right? All you women out there, you're warriors. Um, but there's, that's a long waiting, right? And at first you're like, well, this seems like it probably just goes with it, right? Your first child, it kind of, it's going to be a long time. So you kind of like maybe bracing yourself for it. But then as the hours go on and then you start to look at the nurses and you start to look at the doctors and there seems to be like this air of concern, and it gets to the place where Diane's now been pushing for two hours and the baby's not coming out. And, and we had this little itty bitty doctor. I mean, she had to be five feet, a hundred pounds, right? And she, she gets up. I don't know if you can see this, but I got to kind of do this. You're fine. I'll just make it work. I think. Can you go a little lower? All right. Oh, yeah. So this is the, when, when a doctor does this, and picture like, well, don't picture this, but there's the, the, the canal, right? And the doctor reaches in, and his foot on table, and is pulling. I'm like, first of all, that's disgusting. Secondly, 
I had no fear of holding a baby from that point on. Cause like, it's, it's like grabbing the baby's head. And I'm always worried about the baby, like flopping its head. I'm like, I have no concerns about that ever again. Right? Like, but I watch this hundred pound woman and she is pulling on the baby's head and it will not come out. So then they put on the suction cup. Like whoever thought of this, I have no idea, but they suction cup their head trying to pull her out. And then they put forceps like this is his, what do they call it? This is, um, old, his, not historic. What's the prehistoric or Neanderthal or whatever, right? They put the forceps on my little baby's head and they stopped pulling her with the forceps. When Jenna came out, she's the, well, I was going to say the ugliest baby, but she's very cute in her own way, but she looked like Rocky Balboa. So I was a big fan of Rocky, but I was just sitting there going, while this is all happening, I'm trying to make light of it, but I got to tell you, the waiting room experience to go from you can't wait to have a baby to like, holy cow, like come out now and watching the panic in the room and watching Diane going on three hours of labor and the doc's going, I don't know if she can continue this or not. We might have to do an emergency C-section. It's like the whole room changes, right? And this is what I want you to get with this, the waiting experience, right? When David is writing this in Psalm 40, there's something about waiting and the, the affliction that goes with that, the suffering that comes with that, with the being patient in that, the calling out for help and intervention. When you feel like you have no control in a situation, you know what I mean? Like, what do you do when you're in that place, that miry pit, and you can't get out and you're stuck and the nights are long? And we cry out to our Father. And these are the waiting rooms of our lives. So Chuck, I didn't know if you had anything to say on that or you want to bring up the stool. Buddy, I always have something to say. Um, So, you know, I think that was an amazing, am I on? So I think that was an amazing uh, example of some of many of the moments of all of our lives. Because no matter what in life, we're, we're going to hit the hardest times in all our lives. Every, the, none of us are free of that. And obviously some of us to varying degrees. And um, over the past year, my wife and I um, have just, you know, we're fine as far as our relationship, but we've hit, you know, a tremendously hard road. And it has been filled with numerous pain. And those prayers that I see in the, you know, Psalm 40, like those are prayers that my wife and I have, you know, gone through our heads so many times. And, um, but it's interesting because when we, uh, my wife and I were talking about this last night about our conversations with God, and there's some of the there's some of the things that we see. You know, Christ's desire is that um, that we are one with the Father, and it all comes through for us. My wife was talking last night, and she said, "Chuck, I have conversations nonstop with God." You know, and it's, it's a running dialogue. I know Sean wrote this beautiful prayer. Some people write prayers. Some people recite prayers that others have written. For my wife and I, it has been constant communion with Christ and asking. And the wait has been long. And the wait has been hard. And there's been sleepless nights for weeks. There's been, it's just, it, 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 it's been a drawing in. But through it all, through those conversations, through the patient waiting room, there have been forceps. There have been suction cups that have given us hope. There have, there have been little 100-pound doctors that are pushing, you know, that have given us hope to get us to the next level and the next step. There hasn't, there hasn't been a huge breakthrough yet, but there's been a drawing into Christ and a relationship with Christ has, that has been more than anything. You know, I'll just finish with saying that we don't know when our world will end. But we know that our relationship through that constant conversation, that constant communion with Christ, has 
sustained us, and that in itself is a miracle. And we have seen more miracles through friendships we never had, from people who walk the same walk with us, through, through, it's, through, through maybe gaining an eternal perspective through the waiting rooms. Hmm. And that all comes through communion with Christ. And it's, it's a forge that makes steel. Yeah. I think one of the things that, that I always appreciate about God, and you just told me the other day that you were basically, you know, praying all night long. And, um, I felt connected to you in that moment because I told you like, for whatever reason, God had kept me up. And, uh, and just praying for you and your family. And uh, I think there's something beautiful about that, that sometimes when we're, you know, in our own private waiting room, we feel alone. And uh, I know we're never alone in God, but we still feel alone. And, and I think that just like it's one of the most beautiful blessings of the Christian community is that that we're never alone. Like, God does wake people up in the middle of the night. Like, pray for that person. I, if you don't mind me jumping in on this, I need you to truly understand that over this past year, and however long this is going to last, there have been moment after moment that no one knew what was going on. That, and in the, it's always in the toughest moments, all of a sudden, whether you're woken up, whether it's uh, my friend Will showing up, or his wife showing up, and it's just not expected to be there but there and and it's it's that we live in a spiritual well, realm as well as a physical realm and when we are tapping in to that community with God we are tapping into a spiritual world where everything is connected and we are soldiers for Christ and when we are called when we listen to the Holy Spirit we are not only going out and touching others so when David is praying that he's not only praying that this because it, it's all supernatural. He's not only praying that God is going to move with this mighty hand, but he's also praying that the soldiers of Christ, will, uh, listening to the Holy Spirit, they're going to step in. And that's a, such an important thing for us as Christians to realize that there is that realm, there's that community that not only is physical, but is spiritual and calls us in. Hmm. You know? And that, so now, think of that. You, you, by listening to the Holy Spirit, and all of us, by listening to the Holy Spirit, we're able to partake in a mission, in a prayer, in an answered prayer. Mm. That's why it's so important for us to all, whether we're going through a tough time or we're not going through a tough time, to be in community with Christ. It's so easy when times are good to let our relationship go. But if we let our relationship go through the best of times, then we are missing out on serving in a community for those who are struggling. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's well said. It's, it's, I, I think it's one of the, the things that draws me like to Christianity, one of the most is the, when I think about the church, I think you know this obviously well enough about me that I just love the church. I love the the concept of the church, the the body of Christ, right? Like this this thing that this church is in every, every village, every town, every nation, every city, right? Like the church is just made up of real people, right? And we're, but we're connected by this beautiful God, our savior, Jesus Christ. And, and, uh, it's 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 but i think it's in moments of the waiting rooms that we most maybe appreciate and are aware of god's presence and then maybe even the necessity for prayer because i know i've talked to you about it's like i got nothing right like there's not i can't i don't have any words for you i don't have any advice for you it, it's it's unknown territory it's you've got to just stay connected to god you've got to be there for your wife for your chil you know for all your children and somehow you just got to go through this and and so i just trust god that somehow some way he's going to sustain you guys and there'll be something that will come out of that um there will be a blessing but right now you're in the midst of it and so the beauty is is in the community it's in the church it's in you realizing that you have uh this, maybe this peace that you know that passes all understanding and you get to experience it differently yeah it, it, there's always a tension but then there's always an inner peace that coexists, the human side and the spiritual side. 
So that's, you know, sometimes we look at God as Santa Claus, like we're just, you know, all of a sudden, you know, that whole question, like, why is this happening? But life happens. Mm. But what we have is community with God. And we can never look past that. It's easy to, because, you know, you just want everything to be perfect all the time. All right. Well, thank you. I'm going to have you sit over there again, and then we'll bring you in as, as you feel led. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see where this where it goes. This is what I like. This is the other part I love about church is just kind of like allowing um, God's spirit to move us and, and lead us accordingly. So let's hear some from some folks. Uh, I know there's been some things on Facebook, and so Kara's going to read this out loud, and then I'll just kind of ad lib. Good, Kara. I love that God created this perfect way to communicate with Him that has no limit. We can pray anywhere, anytime, any way for us, and, and, excuse me, and for as long as we like. Hmm. What earthly king, ruler, governing body would ever give his subjects that power and freedom? Hmm. Wow. Let's just hold on that for a second. That, thank you for writing that, um, <laughs> offering that as a gift to all of us. That is beautiful. And, and I'm, I'm so glad that you've captured that because that's what I kind of started off the morning with is just this idea of the imagination of like, God designed it this way, right? Like that's just like, whew, the fact that he did that and made a way for us to, to be with him and never be alone is unbelievable. Um, so thank you. That's fantastic. I pray for my own peace and calm and to hear God's whisper telling me how I can use my own voice, mind, and hands to be part of a peaceful solution. Um, so I guess because both comments kind of hinted at this, there is something beautiful about, there's obviously a lot of different faiths, e even like Catholicism, Protestantism, you know, and just all the branches. And, and so I say this respectfully, but one of the things that, at least in my reading of Scripture, I, I believe that God made a way for all of us to connect with Him uh, readily. You know what I mean? Like, uh, that we can do so at any point. And, and that is powerful. Like, that to me is like the, the, the symbol, if you will, of that we're never alone, that He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Like, that he made a way for us to enter the throne, if you will, right? Into the tabernacle. Like this is the difference between the Old Testament and New Testament. Like that we don't have to be anointed or special or the chosen one to enter into the tabernacle. We just need to be willing to draw near and he'll draw near to us. This is what Jesus did when he became the temple. And now we're the temple of God and the spirit re remains in us, right? And that's that John 15 I was talking about earlier. So there's something really beautiful about what you're sharing. So thank you. I have confidence in prayer because of what I remember of past prayers answered. Mm. God always has my best in mind, even though I might not see it in the moment. Yeah, right? This is, uh, there's um, convictions that I've always, I've said that I've always held up, like I, that I have to believe, because if I don't believe them, life can come in too strongly and wipe out my faith. So the first is that God is love, right? Like, if I don't believe that God is love, then I look at all this stuff happening, it's like, wow, like, this is, like, just awful, the things that happen to us in this world. Um, and then what, to believe that God has my best in mind, right, is pivotal, because if he is love, and he has my best in mind, then no matter what I go through, I know that there's something about that which I'm going through that's going to, um, it's not going to be wasted. You know what I mean? There's something I can learn. There's somewhere I can grow. There's something I can pass on. And those convictions, um, you know, are, are huge for people to wrestle with. And, and if you're not there yet, I get it. And these convictions, I call them convictions for a reason. Because when you're in a place like David's talking about in this miry pit, when you feel stuck and you can't get out, and the, all these troubles are all around you, that's all you've seen and experienced. It's the convictions of our hearts that, that sustain us, right? And so I just appreciate you sharing this idea that you believe that he, God has your best in mind regardless like regardless of the circumstances, regardless of what you go through. And, and I do, I think that's scriptural. I think that's something that's foundational to our, to our faith 
that can sustain us and it's real, it's tangible, and it's necessary. Last one for now. Here's an example of answered prayer. I prayed for my husband and asked for specific signs. God honored that. When, he did, when we did get married, I was later in life, so we were not wait, waiting to start a family. I had two prayers. Don't let me get pregnant on my honeymoon. <laughs> Don't let me be 40 and having babies. God totally answered those prayers. We were married on 2-14-04. I got pregnant the week after 4th of July and was blessed with two beautiful twin daughters on March 05. Four months before I turned 39. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And, uh, you know, yeah, and, and sometimes God does answer in those ways and sometimes he doesn't. And there's always, this is the idea of trusting him, right? Because like, that's so cool, right? That that's an experience that you have. So that's something you can draw upon. We're going to get into that in the rest of Psalm 4, where it just, it's so important to remember how God has been faithful. And maybe that's exactly what you needed, right? And other people go, well, that didn't happen to me, right? And that's what I'm saying. We're all in different boats. So don't compare how God is with, you know, how their experience is with God in, in one way, in one boat, and you're in a different boat, right? It's very important to get that. Um, but I so appreciate you sharing that story and, and, and how God met you in that, and that's something that you can now look back on and know God's faithfulness as a result of that. Um, let me just quickly jump back into the verse for the last few minutes here. Um, we'll see where we go with this. Uh, I'm going to start off and talked about, I waited patiently for the Lord, but, and then he said, he turned to me and heard my cry, right? Um, all right, I'll re- and then he lifted me out of the slimy pit. I'll read this whole thing. Out of the mud and mire, he set my feet on a rock and he gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God, right? So these all represent what is possible in the waiting, right? This idea that God shows up, the Lord, the one who can change things in a moment, he turned and he heard my cry. You know, like, I don't know. On one hand, like, I want us to feel like if, if sometimes prayer is like if I can get God to turn his head toward me. And I don't, this is hard to articulate because I don't feel like it's something that um, we, we need to do in order for God to, to show up. But there's something about this verse that lends itself to saying, hey, the mo- when I cry out, the more I cry out, the more I cry out, the more I cry out, there's something that get God's attention to cause him to turn his head toward me. Because if he will turn his head toward me, he'll see my situation. He'll reach down into the miry pit and he'll pull me out of it. Like there's something beautiful about this that there's... There is a creator God who cares. There's a creator God who's listening. There's a creator God who's not that far off. Right? Some of us believe that God created and then he left. And he's like this often distant God. And like, of course, like, how could I possibly get him to care for me? He's so distant and removed from me. And yet our God is close and personal because he sent Jesus Christ to show us who God is as love. And in that we can understand that when we cry out, we're not crying out to this vacuum out in space in the galaxy, but we're actually to a person named Jesus Christ who's interceding on our behalf to God the Father. And we cry out so that he hears us and hears our pain and hears what we're going through. And in that, he turns to me because he heard my cry. But then listen about this. He lifted me out of the slimy pit out of the mud and the mire. Like what I want us to see is that he lifted me out. He lifted me up. This is resurrection. David is talking about the God that we serve as a resurrecting God. He loves taking us out of the miry pit where death is, where pain is, where suffering is. And he lifts us up to new life, to new beginnings, to new hope. And this is the God that we have. We have a resurrecting God who loves to bring forth his strong arm into our situation and pull us out. That's the God that we serve. And then he says, and he set my feet upon a rock, right? Like this is, this is a foretelling. David is foretelling, prophesying about this Jesus, about this new rock that I'm going to take you out of this. A resurrecting God is now going to place you on the rock. And on this rock, nothing can come against you, right? And in this place, you will know Christ and he will be your savior. And he gave me a firm place to stand, 
And I was thinking about like, this is a firm place to stand is hope. It's our identity. It's in truth. Like this is who God is. And so when he lifts us up, he's like, I want you to know that there's hope because that which you see in my son Jesus, the one who went through it, the one who suffered, the one who was in that miry pit with you, the one that on Saturday, when he died on Friday, and then on Saturday was in the pit of hell itself, taking on all of humanity's pain and suffering, that he was lifted up and he became the rock in which we now get to stand on, that we get to have our identity in him, that our hope is rooted and established in the fact that Jesus Christ was raised. And in that, I can have my identity as a Christ follower. And I can find peace in that. And I can find strength in that. And I can recognize that as truth. And that this truth will set us free. And then this beautiful thing is like, he put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. This idea of new creation. God's given us a new story and that there's a new beginning. It's just, it's on the other side of that. And sometimes you just got to keep crying out and crying out in that waiting room until God turns his face and he lifts us up and puts us firmly on the rock so that you know that's where you stand and you have hope in that because it's your truth and the truth sets us free. This is what's possible with Christ and it's 11 13 so I'm going to end there and what I'm going to do is I think on Wednesday night I'm going to pick up here so tune in Wednesday night tell your friends about this share this with other people like you know somehow we have to take our place and participate in expanding the kingdom of God and so share this with as many people as you can and let them understand the power of God's word, the faithfulness of who he is, that we draw our strength from him, that we place our hope in him. And that so on Wednesday, I mean, I got this whole, you know, we've got a long ways to go here. So um, there's a lot of lessons here that we can learn from David. And I look forward to doing that. What else do I want to say? Anything? You want to say anything? You want to close? Okay. Hmm. let's pray father thank you for the rock Hmm. thank you for jesus christ lord for those that maybe don't have a relationship with christ i ask that you would meet them where they're at and all there is is a receptive spirit really if you want to receive christ into your life you simply just ask him invite him in Receive his goodness, receive his grace, receive his forgiveness. And he wants to give you life and life to the fullest. So Lord, I ask that you just meet people where where they're at in this invitation to you. So that you can be their Lord and their Savior, their Messiah. Lord, touch all of us in a way that, whether we're not ready to do that, but we're still on this journey of asking questions and reflections and, and even doubting. Lord, I just ask that you would minister to those folks and just allow them to continue to lean in, continue to come and taste and see, as it says in Scripture, to try on the different ways, Lord God, because I just trust that your ways make a huge difference in how we live this life. And we, we need these as our nation reflects upon like, the things that we see in the media. Like We desperately need people to come and see what a Christian worldview offers and how it can change a city, and a country. Lord God, come and bless us and hold us and help us to lean into you, help us to ask questions, sustain our faith, Lord God. Sustain us through whatever we're going through. Turn your face toward us and have mercy on us and bestow upon us your grace. That's sufficient. Lord, receive our praise and our adoration and our love for you. And may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks for coming to church. Um, and uh, so set Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, we'd love to have you tune in. And we'll do, I guess, part B of this teaching. All right, peace.